So you're new to Microsoft Teams and you have to participate in a meeting. No problem. We'll show you how to get started. First, there's a couple ways that someone could invite you to a meeting in Teams. If you're all in one team together, they could just come here and schedule a meeting. This lets everyone in the team know that they have a meeting on April 1st at 830. If that's the case, you'll just come to that team under posts and find your meeting here or go to the calendar inside of Teams and click here. Simply click here to join the meeting or click here to join the meeting around 830 on the 1st. But did you know you could be invited to a Teams meeting without even being part of a team? If the organizer just went to their calendar or to Outlook, they can click on a new meeting and invite you right here. And if you're not part of this team, you'll get an invitation in your Outlook. Simply click on the email and you can join the meeting right here. However, if you accept the meeting invitation, notice that that invitation disappears from your list of emails. Once you accept the invitation, it's moved to your calendar. This is the meeting I haven't accepted yet. And this is the meeting I did accept. Notice if I click to open the meeting, I get that same join link right here. So clicking here at any point will get me into the meeting. If I click on it now, it'll just tell me I'm the only one there because this meeting's still over a week away. But let's do that anyway. This will ask whether you want to join Teams online, download the app, or open the app if you already have it. I'm going to choose to open it in the app. If you don't have the Teams app downloaded on your device, then you can simply join the web version of Teams. I went ahead and opened it on the desktop app because of a couple additional features. On the web or the desktop app, you can choose whether to show yourself on camera or mute your microphone. But on the desktop app, you also have the ability to blur your background. Now you can't see my basement. Click Join Now. And now I'm in the Teams meeting. The toolbar is pretty much the same in both the desktop and the online version. I'm kind of distracting here, so we're going to turn me off. You have the ability to turn your camera on or off at any point. You have the ability to mute yourself at any point. If you're not the one currently speaking, it's generally a good idea for participants to mute themselves so that everybody in the meeting doesn't hear a bunch of background noise. Generally, we're working our way across, but we're going to skip over these two for now. You can chat within a meeting. It opens as a sidebar. Simply type and press the paper plane to send, and it will appear in this feed. There's a number of other features in here, just similar to the posts in Teams. You can mark something as important or urgent. You can add attachments, and there's a bunch of fun things like emojis and GIFs. You can also click to show who else is participating. If you're the organizer, then you have the ability to mute other people. You can also invite people from within the meeting, and here you can grab a link to share so people can join your meeting the same way you did. You can't show both the chat, and the participants at the same time because they occupy the same space. Let's look at the ellipses. Here I have the ability to blur the background, to turn off incoming video. Why would I want to do that? Well, if my bandwidth is low, seeing other people's video coming in takes up a lot of that space. If I really just need to hear, then turning off incoming video might be handy. Because I'm the meeting organizer, I can also start recording the meeting. If the meeting is recorded, it will be saved to Microsoft Stream, which is part of our Office 365 account. If the meeting is part of an actual team, then when it is done processing, it will be posted to the team. This meeting was not part of a team, so it will not be posted there. This is the other feature that's only available on the desktop version. If I turn on live captions, I will be able to see live captions on my screen if anybody except me is speaking. And finally, there's the screen share. You have a few different options for sharing your screen. You can share your entire desktop, meaning no matter what window I open, it will appear here on everyone else's screen, or I can choose a specific window. So if I only want, say, my web browser to appear, then I don't have to worry about what else is open on my computer. This is the only window that they'll see. If you want to share a PowerPoint, that works a little bit differently. Sharing a PowerPoint actually lets everybody in the meeting scroll through the slides on their own, and if they ever want to return to the slide that you're on, they'll have a box at the top to click to return to the presenter slide. The nice thing about this view is I can still see the other tabs. I can see the people tab, I can see the chat tab going on. So as a presenter, if I share my PowerPoint, I can still take advantage of all the other functions of Teams. Whereas with all the other options, if I share my screen 
it looks like I've exited Teams and I can only see whatever it is I want to share with everybody. When you want to stop sharing, just click on the stop sharing button in your taskbar. If you ever click on any of the tabs on the side, like you see chat and think that's the chat for this meeting instead of clicking on the taskbar, your meeting actually gets minimized on your screen. But you can always click back here to reopen the meeting window. Same is true for any of the other tabs on the side. Just click here to get back in. And when I say back in, it's not like you walked out of the room. It's more like you turned your head and looked the other way. You're still in. You never really left the meeting. But we're going to leave the meeting now. And we do that by clicking on Hang Up. And that's it. You've now participated in your first Teams meeting.